In this video, we're going to explore what happens in Mass Effect 3 if Jacob Taylor died in Mass Effect 2. Specifically, we'll be looking at some unique dialogue and his replacement character during the mission to rescue ex-Cerberus scientists at the Galax Lab. Keep watching to see it all. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. Before we begin, you should know I have over 150 Mass Effect Trilogy videos on my channel, including hidden scenes, rare choices, lore videos and guides. So if you want to see more Mass Effect, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Ah, I wonder how many people will even care about this video. <laughs> Jacob Taylor is pretty much universally regarded as one of the least likable squad mates in the original Mass Effect trilogy. He's bland, boring, and not that useful in combat. It doesn't help that he also barely displays any emotion ever except for his loyalty mission and that one moment when he's being an edgelord when Thane joins the crew in Mass Effect 2. Sounds like you'll be an asset to the team. That is if you're comfortable having an assassin watch your back. As for Mass Effect 3, he doesn't play much of a role in the game except for one mission to rescue some ex-Cerberus scientists. But given my recent video on what happens during the Grissom Academy mission if Jack died in Mass Effect 2, it got me thinking about what would happen during the Galax mission if Jacob got ganked in the Collector Base. Ah, Jacob! Well, when Shepard and crew land near the science lab, Jacob's role is played by this random NPC. Remember Metal Gear Solid 4 when they started calling Snake, Old Snake? Well, I'ma call this guy Old Jake, even though his actual name is Dr. Weber. The beginning of the scene plays out almost exactly the same as it does with Jacob, except Old Jake takes his place. The funniest thing here is when Old Jake gets shot, it uses the same audio file for the scream as it does for Jacob Taylor. After Cerberus has been taken care of, Shepard tends to Old Jake. However, when Bryn Cole contacts Shepard on the radio, without Jacob there to reassure her that the commander is chill, she keeps the doors locked and you have to fight another wave of Cerberus forces. This is Bryn. If you can hear me, come in. Is there anyone there? This is Commander Shepard of the Alliance. The enemy has been cleared. Open the door. Why should I trust you? I'm here to help. Obviously. Commander Shepard worked for Cerberus. Look, your friend here is gonna bleed out. I'll own that. I'm what's standing between you and a Cerberus shotgun. So open the damn... Take cover! Convinced? I'm on your side. Open the door. Bryn finally lets us into the science lab, where we can speak with her while old Jake just kind of stands there. How badly are you hurt? What about the others? No one else made it. <laughs> Cerberus brought the big guns. You're lucky I got here when I did. Dr. Bryn Cole. Uh, sorry about earlier. I had to be sure. You understand. Tell me what's going on. Intel says you're Cerberus. We're all ex-Cerberus. Scientists, mostly. Civilians? Call us refugees. If we hadn't run, we'd be dead. The rest of our conversations with Bryn are mostly the same, except old Jake informs us about the AA gun problem. This escape will have to be carefully executed. I'd hoped. We tried so hard to make sure it wouldn't come to this. Dr. Cole? Harley, what did you find out? Can't tell. I only know I can't fix it from here. What do you need me to do? Cerberus is probably jamming the satellite link. Access is on the roof. I'm on it. 
Radio me when you've engaged the controls. Be careful. Cerberus just landed up there a few minutes ago. Good luck, and thank you. The rest of the mission is pretty much unchanged, except that Jacob doesn't talk to us on the radio while we fix the AA guns. But this part of the mission plays out pretty much exactly the same way. The final defense of the landing pad and subsequent cutscenes are pretty much identical as well, with old Jake standing in for the deceased Taylor. Dr. Cole, landing area clear. Time to bug out. We'll wait for the shuttle out front. As far as replacement characters go, this one had the least impact on the mission in question, definitely less than Grissom Academy without Jack, Priority the Citadel 2 without Thane, or the Rachni Hive without Grunt. At the end of the day, Jacob isn't really missed. It barely impacts the mission or game at all, aside from losing out on Jacob's 25 point war asset score. You still recruit the scientists, including Bryn, to work on the Crucible project. So there you have it. What happens in Mass Effect 3 if Jacob died in Mass Effect 2? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. I also live stream right here on this YouTube channel, so if you want to catch a stream of me playing Mass Effect or some other RPG, I go live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7pm Eastern. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.